Hey everyone, just wanted to give you an update on Shipwrecked in the Land of King Tobacco, the first Washington family immigrant to America. Sales are going great, YouTube's going great. Uh, when I first set out to write this book, I wanted to write a book about U.S. presidents, which I've always been passionate about. When I went to do research at the Fred W. Smith Library at Mount Vernon, I found myself way out of my league. I mean, everybody who's anybody has written. But in the first couple chapters of each book, I found subtle hints about his great-grandfather and witch trials and business deals gone bad and tobacco merchants and Indian wars, and it was fascinating. So that's what I ended up writing on, even though my passion, uh, you know, rests with the presidents. And if you don't know them, I'll lay them out for you. Uh, the first president of the United States was George Washington. He served for two terms under the new constitution that was ratified in 17. 87. His vice president, John Adams, served a term after. Thomas Jefferson was the third president, served two terms, bought the Louisiana Purchase and doubled the size of the country. James Madison was the fourth president. James Monroe of the Monroe Doctrine was the fifth president. Now, interestingly, of those first five, they were the Revolutionary Era presidents. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson both died on July 4th, 1826. James Monroe also died on July 4th. Now, James Madison died on June 28th, but the doctors were willing to try to keep him alive to keep that tradition going. The sixth president was John Quincy Adams, son of the second president, John Adams. Number seven was the head of the new Democrat Party, Andrew Jackson, followed by Martin Van Buren, who up to that time might have been the most qualified as far as having served in a plethora of public offices. The ninth president was William Henry Harrison. He only served for 30 days because he caught pneumonia giving a two-hour inaugural speech. Uh, his vice president, John Tyler, was not very popular. By that time, the tension in the country over the Civil War was rising, and he did not pursue the interests of his president. Followed by him was James Polk, the Manifest Destiny president who foresaw an America from Atlantic to Pacific. Followed by Zachary Taylor, who died in office from cholera, eating cherries and milk that had soured. Uh, Millard Fillmore was next. Nothing to speak of there. Franklin Pierce was number 14. The poor guy's wife and child were killed in a train wreck on the way to Washington to be inaugurated. How horrible is that? Number 15, James Buchanan, who it is now believed through primary source writing, was our country's first gay president, and he had a relationship with a senator at the time. Number 16 was Abraham Lincoln, first president to be assassinated. Number 17 was Andrew Johnson, Lincoln's vice president, who was actually from Tennessee. During the Civil War, Tennessee had a large Union population, and Lincoln saw it as a chance to heal the country as the war came to an end. Next up, we had the war hero, Ulysses S. Grant, the general of the Union Army, followed by Rutherford Hayes, and this was kind of a dirty election. He basically uh, worked with the House of Representatives to ensure his election, and back then you could kind of do that because it was a tie that went to it. He was first president to have a phone in the White House. Uh, after him was number 20, James Garfield, in my opinion, one of the most underappreciated presidents. Uh, he is shot, but not killed from the shot, but from a horrible infection from it. In medical history at the time, antisepsis was on the rise, uh, Alexander Graham Bell's x-ray machine, and all these things would make a difference later. Number 21, an oft-missed president named Chester Arthur, who had only ever served as head of the Customs House in New York. He was a corrupt Tammany Hall politician. But when given the presidency, he rose to the challenge and was responsible for some of the most meaningful civil service reform ever. Number 22, Grover Cleveland. Number 23, Benjamin Harrison, the grandson of William Henry, the guy that only served 30 days, ninth president. Now, the 24th president was Grover Cleveland again. We have a non-consecutive, 22nd and 24th. 25th president, William McKinley, was assassinated, and he was taken by, uh, the presidency was taken by his vice president, Teddy Roosevelt, who became one of the most popular in history, rightly so, uh, William Howard Taft, number 27, he's the famous guy that got caught stuck in the bathtub, followed by Woodrow Wilson, the rise of Democrat power, the rise of the IRS, the rise of the Federal Reserve, the rise of globalism, the rise of international banking. 
After Woodrow Wilson, we had Warren G. Harding, who is sometimes listed as the worst president in history, followed by Calvin Coolidge, one of the most financially responsible presidents, and I believe a very underrated one, uh, followed by Herbert Hoover, who could not handle the uh, tensions of a world moving toward war, followed by Franklin Roosevelt, who actually was elected for four terms as president, unprecedented, right? He was elected for the fourth term, but died a couple months into it, but served longer than any other president in history. A constitutional amendment was made after. Followed by Harry Truman, right, who dropped the bombs on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After Harry Truman, you had Dwight Eisenhower, another war hero general. Followed by John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And after John Fitzgerald Kennedy, you had Lyndon Johnson, who was so beat up after the Vietnam War, he decided to not run for another term. And followed by him was Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, and then Jimmy Carter. Then we're in the modern era. We had Ronald Reagan. After Ronald Reagan, we had George Bush Sr., Bill Clinton, George Bush Jr., Barack Obama, and the current President Donald Trump. There they are. A fascinating story. It's a good way to keep track of American history, doing it by timeline, because you can look at their cabinets and see, okay, what things were established during what time. For example, during the Lincoln administration, an agricultural administration was developed. It became more official later during the Cleveland administration. During Harry Truman's administration, he reorganized the OSS and the branches of the armed services into one we more recognize today. So it's a good way to look at uh, for, uh, the, President Bush Jr. reorganized government departments of the Department of Homeland Security. So you can keep track of America's policy history in this way, too. I also recommend getting to know your vice presidents and getting to know your speakers of the house. If you just know those things, you can really keep track of a lot when it comes to American history. And finally would be election results around the country. Anyway, um, if you get a chance, go buy Shipwrecked in the Land of King Tobacco, the first Washington family immigrant to America, amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett. And the channel is in the video description. Thanks.